five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is gonna be a question for all the witnesses. It's a yes or no question. So I know you may want to ex expand, but it's yes or no. To all the witnesses, do you support any restrictions on abortion? Do you support any restrictions on abortion? Yes or no? I believe that people, yes or no. I believe that people yes or who no. have abortions deserve to make that decision yes or no. for themselves. I don't think right, that that's it's fair no. that you're Ms. asking us to Ms. say Littman, yes or no to a question Professor that is Littman, this complex. I'm sorry, I'm, you take back my time. Yes or no? I reject the question because all bans are denying people right, the ability no. to Dr. Guerrero, yes or no? Productive health care and control. Dr. Guerrero, yes or no? It's not a yes or no question. It's a all right, fair enough. It's a no. Dr. Verma, yes or no? Any restrictions? I would love to answer your question. I do need more. So that's time a no. Dr. Resnick, no. yes or no? I similarly need more time to discuss that. It's just not a yes, a yes or no on any restriction. It's a no. Dr. Francis, thank you. Dr. Francis, what were the impacts of Roe v. Wade on health care of pregnant mothers and their unborn children? So we have had 49 years of, of access to abortion in this country, and what we've seen is that we now have the worst preterm birth rates in the developed world. We know that abortion, again, based on 168 studies, increases a woman's risk of preterm birth. We also have one of the worst maternal mortality rates in the developed world. Abortion has done nothing to decrease our maternal mortality rates. And in fact, if you look at other countries who have more restrictive abortion laws than we have had in this country, their maternal mortality rates are better. And Dr. Francis, what does the data show on the correlation between abortion and adverse mental health outcomes? And you mentioned this earlier a little bit, but go ahead and expand. Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at the, the, the whole of the medical literature on this issue, what it shows is that two thirds of the peer reviewed studies show a link between abortion and adverse mental health outcomes. In fact, 20 to 30% of women on the low estimate will have long lasting adverse mental health effects from their abortions. All right, Dr. Francis, why is it important for women seeking abortions to be screened for coercion? This is very important. So there's a study that reported uh, that over 60% of women who obtained abortions reported feeling pressured or, or coerced into having their abortion, and only 11% of women reported ha receiving adequate counseling prior to their abortion. So it's extremely important. You know, if we want women to be able to make choices about their health care, they should be the ones making that choice, not someone pressuring them into that. And so it's very important that we be screening for this, and that's one of the reasons why women seeing a physician in person prior to obtaining an abortion is so key, so that they can um, have one-on-one -on -one interaction with her face-to-face -to, -face to ensure that no one is pressuring her into this decision. So let me reiterate what I heard. 60% of women felt there was some form of coercion Wait. for them to have an abortion. Correct. Who came in seeking an abortion. And only 11%, according to your data, indicated they felt they had gotten proper, proper counseling prior to uh, having the abortion. Is that correct? Correct. And, and proper counseling is, is imperative for a woman to be able to give informed consent. Because that would also help on the mental health side, would it not? Correct. Right. Yes. Dr. Francis, you mentioned in your written testimony instances of physicians practicing outside their area of expertise when providing abortions. Can you provide examples of situations where this has happened and what the implications of this could be for a patient? Absolutely. So we know in the in the June medical versus Gee case that went before the Supreme Court in 2020, one of the reasons that the state of Louisiana actually enacted their admitting privilege law, which was a bipartisan supported law, was because that two of the abortion facilities in the state of Louisiana had radiologists and ophthalmologists performing surgical abortions on women. This is absolute medical malpractice. Radiologists and ophthalmologists are not trained in how to instrument a pregnant woman's uterus. They're not trained in how to take care of the complications. And this just represented, again, medical malpractice and poor care for women. And let's talk about that, that not keeping up with the patient or not being able to. You mentioned in your written testimony instances of patients being abandoned by abortion clinics after the conclusion of the procedure. Could you elaborate on the nature of this abandonment? Yes, so um, according to one recent study that looked at complications reported to the FDA of medication abortions, that showed that fewer than 40% of the complications were actually treated by the abortion provider themselves. 
the vast majority of women were left to present to their local emergency room. And I would like to um, read actually from an ACOG committee opinion on how- you got 15 seconds, go. Okay, it says, accurate communication of information about a patient from one member of the healthcare team to another is a critical element of patient care and safety. This highlights the need for direct patient handoff if a patient is having a complication, and this often does not happen when women have sought abortions and, and have complications. Thank you very much, I yield back. Chair now recognizes the chairman of the full committee, Mr. Pallone. 